We're back with another episode, another rider. Today we have Adam all the way from New York City. Yes, sir. And for all those people who like technology, Adam's the man to listen to right now. <laughs> if you're thinking about automated cars and how we're going to be dri uh, driverless and I'll be jobless soon, he's equivalent in sports for cameramen. So he's going to... Do you, you explain it, Adam? Yeah, so we do driverless cameras is one way I like to explain it. Basically, it's uses motion detection and artificial intelligence tech to mostly for basketball but for other indoor sports too it records the players so if you're ever watching whatever sport it is where they move from one side of the pitch or court to another mm -hmm. our cameras are connected to a software that gives them the basically teaches them to capture the players and as the players are moving side to the other the camera follows them so it helps for a lot of lower budget teams leagues federations who are trying to spread their productions to a wider audience but don't quite have the budget for a full production team our technology allows them to film. is this camera on a drone so it's a fixed camera they're like on an arm it's it's it doesn't move. It's not like the cameras that you would see at like American football or some football matches here where they, they physically move around. Uh, it's mounted in an arena and there's three cameras. They each capture one third of the court and then our engineers stitch those three camera images together to give one final image. And then the end product that the client sees is a camera angle that moves as the players move, but the cameras themselves don't move at all. So the camera itself has, what, three lenses on? It's three individual cameras. Each has a lens installed. The cameras are like one inch by one inch. I'm going to okay. butcher the conversion. So let's say the football pitch or the whatever, so you put them in tri three, like a pyramid position. Triangle it's, position. Yeah, it's in an enclosure. So the way that the enclosure is, for the most part, is two either two on the top and one in between them like a triangle like that yeah. or just flipped around um, okay. and it's installed at like the half court line mm -hmm. um, so it has like the whole view of the the field the court and uh and they can rotate or maneuver up up at a higher angle or degrees up or down do you see what i mean so the, so the lens so we install their fixed lenses so we what my team does is we're on the operations side. So we work with, say you're a new client who wants our product, you sign a contract with our sales team, our sales team intros that client to my team. And my team is responsible for taking a client from they want a camera but they don't have anything mm -hmm. to they have a fully functioning camera and they're ready to use the product. How long has this technology been around? So I started in 2017. The company was originally called Keymotion and was founded in Belgium, actually. We still have an office there. I think it was started in about 2013. We have since merged with the company, that new company, then acquired a company in the States named Synergy Sports. Mm -hmm. We rebranded as Synergy Sports, and then a couple years ago, we were purchased by Sport Radar, which is one of the largest tech companies, if not the largest tech company in the world. And so now it's Synergy Sports, which is one of the divisions of Sport Radar. Okay. I've heard of Synergy Sports. Yeah, Synergy is big in the American basketball space. I worked in, I worked for an American professional basketball team before doing this. Oh, okay. You've been doing this camera business for a long time then? Uh, about seven years that I've been. First, there was just, I was planning all the installations and another guy on our team was going out and completing all the installations we handle US and Canada. Now that we have a larger market, we've scaled up, we have way more clients. So I have a team, he has a so team. So do you do English football then? We, so we're not at the outdoor sport point yet, but so right now just with how sensitive mm -hmm. our technology is to mm -hmm. movement, wind, vibration, those kind of things, we keep it to indoors, mm -hmm. but uh, it's definitely in the future because mm -hmm. football is so widespread and popular. So it's two door in, because basketball's indoors, that your cameras can work with the environment. But yeah. once you've mastered that element of the 
terrible English weather. <laughs> <laughs> you were. <laughs> I as, said, this man's as dredged. He's dredged from all the Little rain. Little did I know I got into the <laughs> podcast Superstars Taxi. What, what, what better uh, way to get out of the rain? So you came over here today for business? I didn't actually. I came over here today because I was at a wedding in France, mm-hmm. in Cannes. And the wedding was Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was incredible. Shout out Joel and Joanna. And I had to come back to New York, but one of my best friends lives in London. So I stopped over, Mm -hmm. got in last night, leaving tomorrow morning. Okay. Figured I'd have a nice day. So it's a rush, rush. Figured I'd have a nice leisurely day walking around London until Mm -hmm. I got caught in the monsoon and you saved me. So what's this? What's a typical day like for you in your in your career? So it's pretty seasonal. Right now it's September, which is sort of the beginning of our busy season. Is that the basketball season? Or yeah. Or do you do NFLs as well? So we don't because oh, of the because outdoor. The same yeah. Environment. We do basketball, volleyball. We have done some hockey installs before, but aren't doing as many now. We have looked into indoor football, like futsal, especially in South America, So just, mostly basketball. So to jump in there, what I'm thinking is your, your cameras work independently, but at the same time they're a community, because when the footage goes to the mainframe, it builds one big 360 kind of throw to image, is that right? Yeah, it. this is where so you're going to wish you had a more tech-forward person in our organization as opposed to the ops-forward person. But yes, essentially, the cameras each... Well, the main image is one image that's produced by the three cameras, so as long oh, yeah, as they're yeah. all functioning properly, it's essentially one image. We have... So there's no delay. Watch. There's no delay in the image that's produced. There is, compared to any other broadcast, no delay. That's something that's like big in the technology space in general. Streaming video is cutting down on the latency as much as you can so that yeah. you can pump your video out to consumers Advertising with a three second delay instead of a five second delay or yeah. whatever it is. Right? It's a major difference. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, we offer extra angles too. So there's the main angle, but then sometimes a client will want an alternate view. Some of our higher profile clients tend to, to like that. But what about films? Are you going to enter into films? Right now, it's pretty focused on live sports. There's other potential uses for it, whether it's like for use in like hospitals or places where you want to direct, you want to detect any sort of movement. But for now, pretty much just live sports. I'll tell you what would be a good scene. You know, like Tom Cruise does his action scenes. Oh, yeah. Imagine like he does a, or James Bond when he does a jump in the scene of a train or whatever. If you've got your three cameras, cameras mounted as he jumps, then you're just getting a 360. Yeah, I have a feeling that would be a pretty fun install to see what's <laughs> planned for my guys. Well, to, I interviewed uh... one of Tom Cruise's cameramen, the <laughs> father of his father is Tom Cruise's bodyguard, been there for 20 years. So I still got his contact details. <laughs> a bit well, of commission will go a long let way. Let me know. Maybe we can set something up. Especially if you say you're into Scientology, you'll probably get it. <laughs> Yeah, I won't be jumping on any couches or going to any Scientology meetings, but I would be uh, okay. definitely, if they want some cameras, then we can, uh, we can hook them up. So what do you think of London? I love it. It's uh, one of my favorite cities in general. It's similar to New York, but like classier. Love the pub culture, just walkable parks. The tube is like, one of my favorite things. I love taking the tube everywhere. I was planning on doing it before monsoon season hit an hour ago. Yeah, New York's, but, uh, sorry. New York's got a big tube, but, but it's not as, is it as big. So in terms of number of stations, it's actually the largest uh, public transit system in the world. Okay. The problem is it's just underfunded um, relative to other things. And so the quality of the stations, the quality of the trains, it's a really hard problem because they can't get rid of stations. We do. Because, right. Well, we they do. say they can. We That's, just shut them down. Yeah. So they, they'll shut them down temporarily and they do permanently shut some down, but it's just... You know, there's just so many delays. I was tracking it here, and I took four trains, and I think uh, four or five trains. None of them had delays. 
everything is just right. <laughs> so uh, I come here and I'm like, this this thing is just peak efficiency operation. I know that the trains in Asia would probably yeah, have gonna to say you've been to Japan. Yeah, I've been to Japan or if Korea they're sick and late, they have to apologize to the right. to the public. I'm right. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So this one, I, I was taking the train from the airport yesterday, and they said we're we're two minutes early. We're just gonna stop here for a second, and that's not something I've ever heard in my, in my life. Go and taking the, the subway in New York. Oh, yeah. I lived in New York for like. 10 years taking the subway. Oh, so so where are you from? The Midwest originally? Uh, yes, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Uh, home of the Brown James, among other things. Okay, it's, uh, it's a basketball player, yeah? Yeah, he's a basketball okay. player. If you have any basketball fans who listen to this, I have a lot of know him. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I hear you. So if you can reach out into the Brit into the world of soccer, as you call it, yeah. yeah. Your, your company, we can your, call it football. Your, makes more your sense. company will go <laughs> through the roof in shares. Oh yeah, it, um, because that's the biggest sport in the world. Just in terms of, we've done some studies a while ago on just like the total market of sports arenas, fields, pitches around the world, and obviously an overwhelming percent are soccer. What football. what what percentage was it? Do you know? I don't remember. It it was it was about six years ago that I did it. And it just depends on how deep down you go and what you define as like a professional team or a professional yeah, field. That's that um, touchy subject here yeah. in Europe because people kill for football. Oh yeah. Well, it's no, not, I love not, your, I love like your guys. Football. I love the pyramid system. Like I love the the relegation promotion. Yeah, you can I go up and down. Do I interviewed the owner for Crawley Football Club. Okay. And he's an American. Okay. Yeah, he's from more the more Bible more. Belt. Yeah, okay. And he was very interested. He was talking about how he used to work for ESPN in yeah. America, and then he ended up, and he made his money through gambling before that. Okay. And then he ended up coming over here and buying a football team. So I said, why did you buy the football team? And he said, because, in, and I'm not an American, he said, in America, they don't relegate. Yeah. In England, if you start at the bottom and you invest and make the right decisions, you can go all the way. There are some, there is a movement to do that in American sports, but it's not very big and it's probably never going to be able to happen for, among other reasons, because Business. owners of the big teams would never agree to the possibility of being relegated. Yeah, but then that's where the corruption comes in. Oh, the yeah. owner of the big teams shouldn't have a say. Right. The, the and then they. Relegation, and, the football head themselves. And it's a big problem, especially in baseball, which is not obviously a particularly popular sport over here, but there's a lot of owners in baseball who have no interest in winning. They don't, they don't care about fielding a competitive team. Mm. They just want to own the team and get the prestige and the, the money that comes from that while spending, mm -hmm. you know, as little as they have to, basically. Was that film... Where that guy, was it a baseball film when he worked out all you have to do is get a certain amount of points to win? Or was that American football? Uh, so Moneyball. Yeah, Moneyball. Yeah, so that. Moneyball is that. So the owner, it's funny that you bring that up. So the owner of that team, the Oakland A's, is basically the worst owner there is right now. He's, <laughs> he's trying to move the team. It's, it's really sad because Oakland's like a really good... Uh, they're Oakland's, they've always really where, supported Is that it's, where Ice Cube and that's from? It's like the San other Francisco, side of the Bay. Yeah, it's like the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland. Uh, Oakland, is that a ghetto? Move. That like ghetto area? Um, I mean, it's not as nice as like San Francisco is perceived. There's there's good areas, there's bad areas. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's definitely a perspective. <laughs> <laughs> that's the blatantly correct answer. <laughs> I like Oakland. I have friends who live in Oakland. San Francisco is, gets a lot of gets a lot of love, but like uh, sometimes it doesn't quite have the, the culture of a place like Oakland. But anyways, this guy's trying to move the team to Las Vegas. Really? Of, is that another state? It's Nevada. So wait a minute. San Francisco is in California. California. San Francisco and Oakland are in California. Las Vegas is in Nevada next door. Oh, so people must be. So very people, are, about yeah. That. There's been all kinds and of protests. And why would the, the why would the other Nevada want them? My dad say, "Listen, we've had Nevada got a team." No, Las Vegas wants as many sports. So until like ten years ago, they can make their own. None team. of the leagues were willing to put a team in Las Vegas because they were so worried about gambling, which they is what they said. But like it was never, it was always like a stupid lie. I wonder that people would gamble on the team. It's just it never really made any sense. It was just like teams and leagues and even like. 
broadcasters, and honestly, just the American public has not really understood gambling in, like, a realistic way until, like, very recently. So it's very taboo. It wasn't talked about ever on TV or in the arenas or anything. Like, I know I haven't been to a game, but, like, British football, like, one of the cool things is you can wager in the stadium and do all that. Mm -hmm. um, and in America, that is still doesn't happen, but it would have, until recently, like, been unheard of. Now there's all this like like gambling is legal in certain states and mm -hmm. illegal in others. So like Las Vegas, obviously, it's always been legal there, mm -hmm. and so the leagues were afraid to put teams in Las Vegas. What's your team? So my baseball team is the Cleveland Guardians. My basketball team is the Cleveland Cavs, and my American football team is the Cleveland Browns. What about your British football team? Do you have one? I've, I've kind of been thinking about this. I don't really know. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble with whatever answer I say. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to root for one of the like the teams that... Can I swear on this podcast? Or no? yeah, yeah, you can if you want to. I don't want to root for one of the fucking teams that everyone roots for, like Man U or Chelsea or Man City. I feel like right. Spurs are cool, but like... I don't know. I feel like I don't if I know. Really... Listen, I'm not of North London. I'm South London, so but I don't support a team. But if I did, okay. it would be Chelsea, yeah, or sure. Arsenal because they are near Arsenal. I'm ex military so Arsenal have guns in our team. Yeah. It used to be South London. Yeah, the gunners. They, are, yeah. yeah, and Chelsea is near me, even though it's on the Blues, north side yeah. of the Thames. Chelsea seems cool. I used to love Drogba back in the day. I don't know. I feel like if I were to like really get into it, I would pick like a championship side. Or like a league one side, or uh, okay. the, yeah, and, and like try it because my teams like tend to be underdogs. Like <laughs> okay. great Cleveland teams, like we we haven't won a lot. We've done better recently, yeah. but yeah, I could never root for like one of the okay. huge teams. Well, we're coming to the end of the interview. It's an interesting journey, to say the least. I'm all drier uh, than when I got all, <laughs> all the mistakes you've made in life. If you had the opportunity to correct them or have a more positive future, what would you choose and why? Man, that's a tough question to end on. I feel like I I don't have like a particular regret where I'm like, damn, I look back at that moment or decision and wish I had gone the other way. I think something I maybe wish I had known or told my younger self more is like go for the adventure all the time like you don't necessarily have to I think when you're younger there could be a focus on just like I have to like have a career and like do follow the sort of path that it's expected of someone when you're younger but like yeah like I love to travel and just like seeing more places and having more experiences is what I think mm -hmm. I like to spend my time and money on and I think I always sort of felt that way but I have an even stronger feeling about that now so that's not totally the answer and my last question a little bit of a friendly one for well after that one you yeah. owe me a friendly one <laughs> for all Americans who come in to spend time in England mm -hmm. what would what is your top tip as a tourist walk around take the tube talk to people don't make too much of a plan london in particular is just like it's just endless in terms of pubs restaurants you can stumble into harrods and lose your mind for five hours not figuring out how to get out of the freaking perfume room i've never been uh, in harrods you know it's fun it's fun i never i never buy anything there because everything is it's super expensive the food is actually not some of the food is not crazily overpriced i've been surprised to see but is it gonna be visible somewhere somewhere yeah i mean barely. but yeah no man it's just like a great city it's walkable explorable the parks are amazing check out the parks I think I would say that. Walk around the river. I mean, that was my plan before the rain had other ideas. Well, so, yeah, man. Thanks a lot for that. Oh, my God. And I of wish course. you well. And to add to that, we've got 170 <laughs> museums in London and they're all free. Yes, I should have started with that. The <laughs> British Museum is awesome. The Tate, all the art museums. To hear more interviews, follow Taxi Chronicles on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts where you hear real riders share real stories about their lives.